He was with John Kinney's gang. And they were sworn enemies of Billy's regulators. Why were you after him? I owed that son of a bitch a bullet for what he had done to me and mine. Instead, all I got for myself was a goddamn death sentence. Luckily, it was right around then that I heard Billy make his move. He shot Jim Bell and a few other guards as he made his getaway. Later, they wrote that some lady friend planted a pistol for him in the privy. What the papers didn't say is that Billy helped me escape, too. My first order of business was finding a firearm. Luckily, I located Deputy Bob Ollinger's mean-ass shotgun. I saw Billy through the window and he yelled that I should take to the rooftops to make my escape. So I did. Anybody see Billy? Oh, oh, I can't you. Jim Hell yeah. That scatter gun was like a double-barreled howitzer. Uh, it could blow a man clear off his feet. Uh, you hardly had to aim the damn thing. Guards were everywhere looking for him. Can't let the kid get away. Jump from roof to roof like a damn alley cat. I followed the planks where I could, but some of that wood was slippery as hell. The whole town was up there. And suddenly, there's a future. bastard you were after. What did he do? He did me and my family a grievous harm. But I knew if I was ever going to find him, I would need to get my ever-loving ass out of there. I tried to be stealthy and sneak my way past. They weren't all waiting for me. 
Apparently, some of them thought I was Billy. See, me and the kid shared a certain similarity in build and color. I was just glad I had Deputy Bob's mean ass shotgun. In the street. I've got Get this. Get your headstone! There's two. Stop. So much lead was whizzing by my head, it was like everyone in Lincoln wanted to put me in the ground. I knew I needed to find a horse. Though I never did have a great fondness for those four-legged grass eaters. Smelly, sweaty, ungrateful beasts. We prize them too high, if you ask me. And that's when it occurred to me why Billy set me free. could be a hapless decoy and draw attention while he snuck out of town. I knew if I made it out of there in one piece, no one would put a price on my head. Because everybody in Lincoln would be dead? No. Because they all thought I was Billy. And all that blame would fall on him. Meanwhile, Deputy Bob Ollinger was organizing a posse to put me down. He was already a mean son of a bitch, but he was doubly pissed that I stole his mean ass shotgun. Anyway, it was me or them, and the only way forward led me straight to perdition. But the cards were dealt, and I had no choice but to play it.
Finally, I found what I was looking for. The stables on the edge of town. I guess Billy saved your ass, taking out Bob Ollinger the way he did. Billy didn't kill Bob. Well, sure he did. He dispatched him right after he shot Deputy Bell. No, sir. Because Bob came right up behind me, angry as hell that Billy had lit out. Hello, Bob, I said. I think you better let me go. And he says, I don't think so, boy. Not with my shotgun. So we stood there in the middle of the street, eyeball to eyeball. He intended to kill me, and I knew I had no choice but to defend myself. Some say I fought unfairly, but they weren't the ones looking him in the eye that day. Pat Garrett gunned down Billy three months later, so his escape was all for naught anyway. So where'd you go after Lincoln? Mexico. Until I realized nobody was looking for me. I ended up taking a job at the Rurales. The Mexican Rurales? I was hired to help them track down the Cowboys. The most vicious outlaw gang in Cochise County? Curly Bill Brocious? Johnny Ringo? Led by old man Clan himself. They must have paid you a pretty penny to take them on, Brazon. Not really. But truth be told, I had my own reasons for going after those boys. So was the bastard you were after now riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Bryant was his name. Oh. But no, this time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. And yes, he was working for Old Man Clown. I came upon them robbing a stagecoach, which wasn't surprising being they were such murderous thieves and bastards. The bandits wore red scarves, so I knew they worked for the old man. Over there! There! I did my best to help those poor bastards. Moments later, the attackers were dead, and I checked the stagecoach to see how many passengers were still breathing. None. It was then I wondered if the rocks weren't hiding more bandits. Was that all of them, or did I just hit the rear guard? I quickly got my answer. 
They attack from on high like Apache's orphan did. They would appear in great numbers from above and rain down lead on their hapless enemies' heads. Making use of the high ground and whatever else they have. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere, and there never seemed to be an end to them. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? W what happened to the Cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's Cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle, but I was holding my own against an overwhelming enemy force. See, at the time, I was still pretty green, and would often blunder into regrettable situations. But I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. I didn't see Ringo. But I knew he was with the Cowboys. He and Roscoe Bob had done me a dreadful wrong. And I was determined to have my revenge. But to get to Ringo, I knew I'd have to find my way past these other assholes first. Unfortunately, I was running out of ammo. Another perfect example of my relative inexperience as a hunter of men. I immediately knew that a tactical retreat was called for, as my vengeful fury was much less impressive without the bullets to back it up. Finally, they managed to corner me. Trapped as I was, the odds of my survival seemed pretty slow. Luckily, serendipity was on my side as I suddenly spotted a way out of my predicament. I ran ahead as if the devil himself was after me. Bullets were whizzing by my ears, but I wasn't about to roll over and die. I just kept running like there was no tomorrow. Because there wouldn't be, the Clanton and his men caught up with me. As I was scurrying around those caves, I thought, what was I thinking? Going up against a gang like this.
They were hunting me like I was game. Where's he gonna run to now? I just kept running, not knowing where the hell I was going. when something miraculous happened. Like mana from heaven, I found the desiccated remains of what looked like an Apache warrior. The old weapon next to him supplied me with some much needed ammunition. <laughs> Bat Masterson once told me it was more important to be lucky than good, and he would know. And imagine my surprise when I found a fistful of dynamite to go along with that ammo. That stroke of good fortune, even the odds, bolstered my confidence. It was time to turn the tables. Time for the prey to become the predator. Time for the hunted to become the hunter. Time... All right, Jesus, we get it. They were right where you wanted them. That's right, Jack. I was done running. And the old man's boys were not expecting that. No, sir. I came at them like a wildcat. My fury knew no bounds. Finally, time for that old man to pay for his sins. I yelled out at the top of my lungs. I'm coming for you! But I knew I could not let that deter me. Not if I was to find and kill Ringo. I needed to get that old man off that gun.
Most everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon. But it was just me. Most everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon, but it was just me.
Most everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon. Yeah, but it was just me. me. told Ike and Billy Clanton that it wasn't a Mexican who took their father's life that day. They just assumed it was one of the Earps, and that little misunderstanding eventually led to that legendary gunfight at the OK Corral. <laughs> 